Today I want to show you how you can record just one violin player and make it sound like a whole violin section. Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. Normally I play piano and sing, but I play a little bit of violin as well. And today I want to show you how I record myself to make it sound like a violin section. Can we substitute a violin section with only one player? Mm, not really. Because every player in a section will have their own timing, their own intonation, their own vibrato, their own instruments. And also, the harmonics from a section will be different from only one violin. But we can come rather close with some tricks. What tools do we need? Well, we need violins. Violins in plural. I have a few violins on my table here. I have three acoustic violins and one viola. I also have this electric violin, which I won't use because it doesn't sound natural recorded. This is good for loud stages, but not for recording. And then we need some microphones, of course. Wait. Normally, when you record acoustic instruments, you go with either a small diaphragm condenser microphone or a large diaphragm condenser microphone. But I won't use them for this recording. We could also go with microphones that are attached to our violins. For example, this one that sounds really, really good. I won't use that one either, but this could work. I will choose a ribbon mic for this because it's smooth. The top end on a ribbon mic is often a little bit rolled off, so you get that nice soft top end instead of harsh top end. If I would record a solo violin, maybe I would choose a condenser. But for the section, I use the ribbon. But I will use one more microphone, and that is this one over here. And this I place in the back of my room maybe five, six meters away from my close mic. And the time difference between those microphones will actually create a more lush and big sound. We also need one of these, a sordino, a damper, a mute. They could look in different ways, but they all work the same. We also need something to play, of course. I made an arrangement on a song I'm working on here. I just printed out the parts. You don't have to read sheet music to do this, but it helps if you do. Most doors can actually print sheet music from your MIDI tracks. So if you experiment with some harmonies on string sounds in your door, maybe you can print that for your violinist or yourself if you play violin. So let's start record, shall we? I've placed my ribbon microphone coming in from behind above the violin because that also made a less harsh sound. And I have a sheet music stand with my sheet music paper on them, so uh, let's start record. That was one take from my first violin. Now I'm gonna do another take with this violin. And also I want to tell you that I'm recording both microphones at the same time, both the closed mic and the mic in the back of my room. One more time, it's the same part with the same violin. Let's go. Now I have recorded the first violin part two times. Now I'm going to record it two more times using the same violin, but with the damper. The difference between damper or not, without and with the damper, much mellower. After that, I'm going to record the same thing again two times without the sordino and two times with it, with the second violin and then the third. And that's only the first violin part. And then I will do the same with the second violin part. Three violins, each violin, two times with the damper, two times without. <sighs> it's gonna take a while, so i see you in a bit. Now I've recorded the first violin part, 
I recorded it 10 times. Four times with the first violin, four times with the second violin, and two times with this lost violin. And because I have two microphones, that became 20 tracks. Don't do this if you don't have patience, because this is utterly boring, playing the same thing over and over again. But if the result is good, the boring part is worth it, right? Now I'm gonna play the second violin part the same amount as the first violin part. I have recorded the first violin part 10 times and the second violin part also 10 times and my back is starting to hurt. But I will continue and this time with the viola. But I'm gonna use one of my violins also, maybe two of them, just so it sounds like more like a section. I don't play cello and I don't own a cello, but I will try to play the cello part anyway. I have it here with a bass clef, but I've made an octave higher cello part with an alto clef so I can play it on my viola. And then I will try to pitch that down 12 semitones and see if we can create an artificial cello part. Let's see what I've recorded. I have my tracks here. The green are the closed mic violins and the blue are the far mic violins. And I've panned them left right, totally left right, because I can always make them narrower later, but I can't make them wider. And if I've panned the closed mic to the left, I've panned the far mic to the right. Let's listen to them. Here are the near mic violins. Sounds okay, right? But it, you can hear that it sounds like just a few players playing it. How about the far mic? Sound like this. A little bit of the same thing there. Let's put them together and it will probably, hopefully, sound more like a section. For me, that makes a huge difference. The time difference between the two microphones when you record it makes the sound more like a section and you get more of that lush, big string sound, which I'm after in this case. Now I'm going to bounce them down. I'm going to bounce the close mics together and also the far mics together, part by part, so I can control them more after. Maybe I need to do some automation or something. But first, I want to go through part by part and see if I need to edit something. And I don't want to bore you with that. If I can ask one favor of you, it would be that you would subscribe. That helps me a lot. Thank you. I have bounced my tracks and I put them in my session. So here's what we've got. Let's listen to Violin 2 Close. The only thing I did to it was that I narrowed the stereo image a little bit and put some reverb on it. and the far. And together. For me, it sounds much more like a section when they are together, but I wanted even more section-like strings. So I also recorded a software instrument. This is BBC Orchestra from Spitfire. but tucked underneath my real strings. And together they all sound like this. And I did that with all my strings, so now they sound like this. Let's see now. I've recorded the first violin part 10 times with two microphones. That means 20 tracks. The second violin part the same. 
viola six times and cello six times. That makes a total recording of 32 times, which means 64 tracks in total. So a checklist if you want to do this yourself. First of all, use multiple instruments. If you play violin, you probably have a couple of violins or a violin and a viola. Use them all on each track because you will play differently on each instrument because they behave differently and you will play according to that. Second, use vibrato. If the bigger sound, the more lush big sound you want, the more vibrato you should use. But you can also vary the vibrato from track to track. Maybe one track with less vibrato, one another with a lot of vibrato to make it sounds like multiple players. Third, avoid loose strings. Always try to have a finger on your violin because loose strings doubled doesn't sound good. You will notice that if you try. And arrangement is key. The better arrangement, the better the result. Also, record too much. You can always take things away when you're mixing later, but probably it will be hard to record it once again. To set up all the things, maybe call your violinist friend to record more. Record more than you need, even if it's boring. And I promise you, it is boring. Thank you so much for watching. What we play the violin with this, a bow. In Swedish, it's stråke. Stråke. Until next time. Roger that. <laughs>